All right, so I'm going to jump into a video about the recent news that Cardi B has filed for divorce from her husband Offset. So what I will say is this. So those who've been on my channel for a while know that sometimes I do dive into pop culture um, conversations. You know, I like to go more in depth about teaching the certain signs but at the, and the certain placements, but at the same time, I do think it's interesting to look at famous people because then we can actually look at their behavior and see how astrology fits in. So you don't have to be a fan. You could be a fan. I'm not saying go download their music after we're done. I'm not saying not to. I'm simply talking about this um, the, this couple that recently is, you know, the news is they're going going to go have a divorce and so I'm going to look at their placements of what I can find and let's talk about is you know if we look at them we could say they both have Venus and Scorpio is that enough a lot of times people will ask questions online and say you know oh well we both have this placement is that good or we're both Libras but there's so much more to a chart than one sign and though Venus does indicate what we value who we're going to value the type of partner we might value and what we might need to feel comfortable and relaxed in a relationship. Um, it's not all there is, right? And so, yes, Venus, a, a shared Venus sign can, you know, jumpstart a relationship very quickly, as I believe was the case with Cardi being offset. Like they, they've been married, I believe, for like three years, but it's not like they, they got engaged pretty soon. I would say after they were um, in, in a relationship, like like not really. I have to look it up, but not super super soon, but. Maybe it was, but it's not like they were together for 10, 12 years. You know what I mean? So yes, there can be sparks when you share a sign with someone because like energy recognizes like energy, but there's more to it than just one placement that can really drive you and another person together. All right. So before I jumped into their chart, I do not have their birth time, but I do have their birth dates and they seem pretty accurate. And also, um, so I have enough information to really give some insight on this relationship based on the astrology of it, okay? So again, I, I know I've heard some things about Cardi B and Offset's relationship. Um, you know, I haven't really filed it hardcore, but I do know they've had some ups and downs because of the infidelity on his part. And Cardi, even though she's very feisty as a, her personality as a rapper, uh, he's a rapper as well, even though he's very feisty, and she's very feisty. There's this in the relationship. She takes more of a, um, you know, everyone makes a mistake type of thing when he was caught, you know, cheating. Um, now the thing with that though, is there are placements in her chart. We'll get to where it's not on the outside. She might be, you know, projecting that in order to not have people all in her business, like kind of shut people down. You know what I mean? The minute she says that people aren't going to probe too much. But um, I think this is probably a reason why their relationship is definitely on the rocks enough to her for her to file for divorce. Now, before we get into their astrology, I want to take a look at what's happening right now, though. What are some transits happening that might be impacting this decision and this relationship? Because, you know, there's been, been some issues for a while, but now it's coming to a point where there's really going to be something, you know, drastic happening. So first of all, Mars is, ret is in retrograde in Aries. Now, she has an Aries moon. So this could speak to why this energy maybe felt more right, a, a better time for her to, you know, file for divorce. Something kind of pushing and urging her. This is not, I believe this is something that has been building up for sure. Though the Aries moon person sometimes can be very impulsive, she also has her Venus and Scorpio. So she wanted to hold on to her marriage. I don't believe this was her like, oh, let me find somebody new. Let me just go. I think there's a part of her that feels there's no other choice. And she knows that she has to be the one to file divorce because I don't think he would have been the one to file divorce, actually. I think he might have been the type of man to stay in a relationship, marriage for a long time, be separated, not legally divorced. Um, you know, I think that's, that's especially with his mutable energy, I think that's what, have, what would have happened if Cardi didn't do it herself. Now, Mercury, um, oh, so Mars being in retrograde. So that's masculine energy. Mars rules Aries. But when we have it in retrograde, it's it still has to do something because it's Aries, right? So Aries energy is cardinal and has to direct itself and, and get all that that um, restlessness out. But when we have it in retrograde, what we can expect, especially in this type of situation, is a change in vitality. What you wanted to do before, what you had so much energy to do before, you just don't have the energy anymore. You know, she doesn't have the energy to deal with it anymore. And like also Mars in retrograde in this situation, again, there's a lot of interpretations for Mars in retrograde, but this video is not about Mars in retrograde, but I'm just talking about the relationship. 
it, it, there's a change in the direction. But remember, Mars in Aries has to go somewhere. This is not an internal energy. So even though it's in retrograde, we're seeing a, like a swirl. I would just look at it like, instead of seeing Mars and energy as like a fireball <laughs> rushing at you, look at it as in retrograde, it's swirling around. And it's trying to find the direction it wants to go in because it has to go somewhere. So there's a lot of things going on with that. Mercury also being a Libra, you would assume, okay, Cardi B is a Libra. He's a Sag, by the way. Oh, so maybe, you know, maybe that, why wouldn't they just work it out? Mercury's in Libra. Well, you have to also understand that Mercury and Libra also demands uh, being on this, like being able to effectively get their point across as well. So the thing with Mercury and Libra energies, I need to relate to you. Mercury and Libra isn't just, hey, I'm just going to give in. Mercury and Libra is, I need to relate to you. And, and if she's starting to feel like she doesn't relate to him anymore, she's starting to feel like they're not on the same page. This could also be, you know, as an indicator of what's going on. You know, because she's not able to feel. And as a Libra son, there is a part of her that wants to to appear like they're on the same page. Like even when they've had the infidelity and things like that. Like I know she did break, I think they did break up at one point and then he started like going to her concerts and like, you know, buying her expensive things and things like that. But Mercury and Libra, you know, there's a need to relate. And when you don't, you no longer relate, um, or when Libra energy doesn't feel listened to at all, that is where you might see that more, um, dismissive side kind of coming out and Libra is related to contracts and negotiations so she's at the point now where she's like we just need to figure this out and I believe she asked for custody of the two year their two-year-old daughter now also Venus is in Leo right now and this is what I say about the importance of understanding that transits will transits have all they all have an energy but it might mean something different depending on your personal transit chart and also what you're going through in life we can't say everyone that has v Venus and Leo transit means everybody's going to be generous and everybody's going to fall in love and everybody's going to be happy. Like that's a very superficial look at Venus and Leo energy, right? Though it can exude this kind of happiness and this kind of overall appreciation for what we have, depending on someone's chart, it could be in a different place. Like if somebody has Venus and Leo in the sixth house, um, or let me think of another house, or any of the earth houses, it could definitely cause somebody to re, to think about um, what they're gaining from a situation. And so it can speak to valuing your own passion and centering yourself. So to you, Venus and Leo experience is very different maybe, but for Cardi, it might be, she's trying to center herself for once. She's tried to hold on to the relationship for a long time. Now again, none of us are in a relationship. I'm not saying we don't know what she did. We don't know what he did. We don't know. We only know what they reported out before. So that's the information I'm going off of. Jupiter is also direct in Capricorn. So Jupiter just went direct in Capricorn. So what's happening now with all that kind of matching up is, remember, Jupiter in general is light shedding a light on reputation because Capricorn deals with authority and reputation. And anything that's considered a part of an establishment, anything, that's a, anything that people in power are doing, if you're paying attention to the news, anything that people in power are doing, the light is being shed when Jupiter is in Capricorn on people in power and, and people. So they're power, you know, they both are rappers. They're both, um, you know, have their own money, you know, um, anything that's a part of the establishment is getting a light sh shine on it right now. And marriage is considered an institution, right? You know, a lot of people think butterflies in love, but marriage is a legal institution. It's a tradition. It is meant to procure resources. I mean, that was the original thing with marriage was like, you came together in order to have a, to provide for a family. That was the original, you know, I'm not saying that's what you have to view it as, but that's what it was. So Jupiter going in direct can be an influence and the sun is in Virgo. So the sun being in Virgo right now, remember we're thinking about the sun, no matter what sign it's in is projection. This is what I'm trying to show. Thinking, analyzing, projecting deep thought and analysis. She's thought probably long and hard about this about what needs to be fixed and what needs to be improved. And one thing also with Virgo energy, the criticalness is to produce an outcome. I think people forget that. Virgo is an earth sign. So if, if someone, if, if, there, if there's a critical nature to the Virgo energy, there's a need to see that thing produce something. And so this energy can be speaking to what's going on in their relationship right now. Now, if we move on, this these are their placements. So, what we have is Cardi has a lot of cardinal energy in her chart. So Cardi, cardinal. Um, and Offset has a lot of mutable energy in his chart. 
So what's interesting is they're, they do have this shared Venus in Scorpio. Hers a little bit more advanced than his, you know, at the 19th degree. So we have a different type of energy going on there, but they have the same sign. And sometimes when you have the same Venus sign as someone else, there is like this kind of magnetism, especially the depth, okay, of Venus in Scorpio. Now, Venus is tip is in fall here, right? Because Venus can't really relax. Venus wants to be in Taurus and Libra because it's kind of this chill. It's this really chill energy, right? But when Venus is in Scorpio, it wants to be so intense. And so therefore it's really hard. It's really difficult for Venus to just chill. You know, it has to be intense all the time. Um, and so what we'll see here uh, with Cardi is, um, you know, I do think that, you know, if we if we think more about what's going on here, I think his Venus energy, I'm sensing and what I see from the nine degree, there's a more liking the idea of the intensity, right? When I'm looking at his Venus, you know, degree and all that. With hers, I, I feel like there's still her trying to yield to the, the, um, the intensity, but at the same time, I feel like there's more of a, um, she's a little bit more demanding in the relationship, even within like their partnership and their union, even though they both have Venus and Scorpio for her, it's more like this depth and knowing what she wants. And for him at the nine degree, I think this is more about not really knowing all that much what he wants. Like, like, cause he's mutable energy, right? So I feel like he likes the idea of the intensity and the draw that he had to Cardi. Um, but he, it's not as well developed because I feel like her, her, she, you know, she also has Mercury and Scorpio. So she understands intensity a little bit more than him where he has a lot of mutable energy going on. And his is more about, you know, Sagittarius energy is more about, okay, I need to, um, spread my message and I need to, you know, he probably is someone in a relationship that, you know, probably talks a good game. I think he talks a really good game to her. Mercury, not to say that she's being manipulated, but Mercury and Sagittarius, he says the right things. He probably says a lot of things. He's a rapper, <laughs> but his Mercury being a Sagittarius is like Mercury and Sagittarius can talk people into almost anything because Mercury and Sagittarius can be very optimistic. And so that optimistic energy kind of can overcome you and you start to believe everything that Mercury Sagittarius person is saying to you. So I think that he has that kind of way with him where he likes to project that he knows how to handle every situation because you think of Sagittarius is like Sagittarius doesn't like to show when they don't know how to handle something. Sagittarius does not necessarily like to show vulnerability. If a Sagittarius does, there's other placements in the chart. And most Sagittarius do know what they're talking about. Like that's not a a, a um that's not a misconception there's there's a knowledge there there's an understanding there right and i also think his sweet talking and his ability to kind of you know uh to to especially after the infidelity thing to get her back was that moon in pisces there's a gentleness to him maybe when they're alone and maybe the rest of us won't see it but that moon in pisces energy now again it's a late degree pisces so it's about to head out, right? It's, it's saying, all right, I'm about to head out. But moon in Pisces energy is gentle, it's calm, it's serene. And when she has a moon in Aries, she might likes a man, like a man that kind of calms her down a little bit. And he might do that in a way because he has a lot of mutable energy. His Mercury is in Sagittarius. He's able to talk her through things. Um, you know, I do think that Based, doesn't matter, matter what we think. I think that um, there is a level where they understand each other and where they probably have really good conversations with each other. But what's happening here is Libra and Aries, a Libra sun, moon and Aries woman. Well, that's cardinal. And her moon is in Aries. She knows exactly what she wants and she wants to project it. A moon and Aries person cannot, they, they, there is a defensiveness in the moon and Aries person. And so that's why, you know, when you see her and, and that's why when Cardi... When people say things about Cardi online, she has to say something. It's not like a Beyonce. Beyonce is a moon in Scorpio, you know, where, you know, once she's not even, she choose a Scorpio moon picks and chooses what to be bothered by. Even though they're a water sign, it's almost like a choice. Whereas Aries, as the first sign of the Zodiac, it's more of this, this, this burst of energy. And it can be great because it's independent, right? So I think there's a lot about Cardi where Cardi can be independent. Cardi has been independent. Cardi kind of carved her own way. When we first saw her in Love and Hip Hop, 
people were like, who's this? She's just saying any old thing. And, you know, but she, you know, her Saturn's in Aquarius and so is his. So they kind of, you know, it worked for her, you know, her doing things in the unorthodox way. It worked for her. She knew when she was going on Love and Hip Hop that she wanted to make an opportunity out of that. Whereas other, other people would have done it the whole different way. She snuck in the back door, right? She, she, she found a different way to get her, her success. Now, you know, um, what's interesting though also is, um, you know, just thinking about Cardi as a person, there's a lot of people, you know, there are people who don't like Cardi B, there are people who do. Um, there are people who do like, I don't understand the hype. Here's the thing about Cardi though. Her Jupiter is in Libra. Her Jupiter is in Libra. Now it's a zero degree Libra. So it just got there, which is probably the reason why some people, um, target it or didn't like Cardi because zero degree energy is not giving you the full thing. Now I wouldn't say she, she, she has a way where people are like her. They like the way she says things or the way she does things or just her, I don't care attitude. She's very, you know, some people view her as, oh, she's real. She says what she wants to say. Now, something she says has gotten her in trouble. So I'm not advocating either way, but what I'm saying is when people have Jupiter and Libra, Jupiter is the area where you might have the most luck and it's a very expansive. Wherever your Jupiter is, is the area where you can expand. People are going to see you and be drawn to that. And you might have luck in that area. So whether people like her or not, she's always probably going to have fans. Her Jupiter's in Libra. If she decides to stop music tomorrow, she's probably still going to have something, right? Um, her Mars is in Cancer, though. His Mars is in Sagittarius. And so I do think that, um, you know, when they argue, it can get kind. She internalizes things more than him. Um, I think he might say things that she doesn't like. I think with that Sagittarius energy in his chart, he has Sag Moon. I mean, sorry, sorry, Sag Sun, Sag, Sag Mercury, and Sag Mars. So I feel like she doesn't like, even though you might look at Cardi and be like, oh, you know, Cardi just says whatever. Cardi has more direction than him. I feel like Cardi always knows what she wants. Cardi knows what her she's she's going for. She's a moon and Aries woman. She knows what she wants. And that attraction was probably to the the Sag in him. Also that fire energy that she saw and that she felt that she could appreciate. You know, if you look here um, at these degrees, now these degrees might be one or two off because again, when we have the actual birth time, sometimes degrees move up or down a little bit, but these should be pretty much accurate. Um, you know, if we look here, you know, typically when we look here, okay, we see that fire signs trying, okay, so 50, okay, so his son trying to her moon, right? So she feels like she's getting that fire energy, that kind of, he's, he's, he's a, he's also could be really romantic based on this chart. Um, I also think that, you know, um, he, she likes that he, 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 he's expressive. I think she likes that he's expressive when he wants something he 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 goes for it um you know and again that kind of got some trouble with some other stuff but I think that she likes this a sad expression in him he's kind of you know he tells the truth but at the same time he's a little bit more he's not he has not as controversial as Cardi he hasn't gotten into as many Twitter beefs and things like that with people um again I think that moon that the moon in Pisces he he doesn't like to exhibit conflict, but he's been in conflict, you know, with the, the baby, the baby's mom situation where the baby's mom at one point was claiming that he was still, you know, dating her too, whatever the case may be. Um, what else we can look at here? I mean, their, their outer planets are the same. So we have, um, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto. So when a couple has the same outer planets for the most part, that means the issue in a relationship is not going to be the differences in generations, right? It's not going to be, you know, how different generations have different understandings of things, right? Whether it's, you know, politics, race, gender, sexuality, um, you know, um, you know, anything like in society, you know, raising kids, like any, you know, how generations just have different perspectives, wrong or right, wrong, right, or in the middle, whatever, Generations can have differences in how they perceive things and what we've experienced, right? So they are in the similar, they were born a year apart. So, you know, they're pretty much the same generation. The issues they have are not with differences in, in, in ideology or things like that. I don't, I wouldn't say that's the reason why. Now, if they had a huge age gap, then we might have to look at their generation. They both have Chiron and Leo. 
um, which is very interesting for a couple to both have that as the, the place where they need to heal the most. And the Leo, I mean, you could look at him like, well, wait, they're both famous. But there is something that both of them had to overcome to get to that part. Or there's things we don't understand because we don't know them. We are not in their relationship. We can look at this chart all day long, but there's things that we're never going to know. Um, so with Leo and Chiron, there does mean overcoming some confidence issues, maybe from the past. Um, with his, I think it could sense more him trying to figure out how to be on his own. So he's in the Migos, but I feel like there's eventually going to be a point or there has been a point where he's trying to figure out who he is outside of that group. Cause I feel like he's been in there. He's been in there for a long time. I, they're related, I think. So I think eventually he's going to try to figure out who he is outside of that group. What are his individual abilities outside of being a part of that group? And with Cardi, I think her Chiron and Leo is her understanding her own inner confidence without worrying about what other people have to say. Uh, because, um, you know, if we look at Twitter and those things like that, I know that she's gotten to a lot of Twitter beefs with people. She takes some things very, you know, personal and she has to say something back. And I don't think that's the Mercury and Scorpio. Again, if I knew what house her Mercury and Scorpio was in, I mean, it has to be in a house that's very vocal. Because Mercury and Scorpio tends to be, and that's why her insults can be so scathing. Like Scorpio goes deep, but Mercury and Scorpio tends to be more obscure. It's more about, you know, depth and trying to, to, to put piece things together. Mercury and Scorpio people like to figure things out. They like to study people before they say anything. So with hers, it has to be in a house that causes her to react and respond very, but again, that's probably more of her Mercury or her moon and Aries energy. That's kind of just it just spills it out. And also her having Mars and Cancer. Well, Mars and Cancer energy can be a bit unstable because Mars doesn't want to be in Cancer. Mars wants to fight. <laughs> Mars is, my, well, Mars wants to fight, but Mars is known as the planet of war. But Mars wants to act and, and, and be, be strong and be aggressive and dominant and seize the day. Cancer wants to nurture. And so that can cause a lot of instability in anyone. Um, I think that typically, you know, a lot of times even... Uh, you know, some men don't don't do well with that Mars and Cancer sign, um, and so with even as a woman who she has um, like, you know, Libra and the Aries Moon. Aries is a masculine Moon. I feel like it just her Moon, and they're both at the 15 degree together square. Okay, so yeah, I mean that causes some issues with her because oh yes, this is a mutual reception. How did I miss that? Because the moon rules Cancer and Mars rules Aries. So it's a flip-flop. It's called a mutual reception in, in astrology. But it's a flip-flop going on. So she it's you know, she shows her emotions more in a very direct way, but then in her action, it's doing what she really feels. So it could also maybe sometimes confuse offset in a way because of this energy between her moon and her Mars. You know, I feel like even when she wants to come off soft and certain things, it's hard for her to do that, especially when she feels people stir her up. Um, so she can kind of change her moods very easily. Um, it can be a little, you know, maybe a little volatile. I'm not saying physically, but I also noticed here that they have um, Neptune and Capricorn individuals. You're part of that generation. You know how to make your dreams reality in a way in which you understand your limitations. Um, you know, Neptune and Capricorn generation, you know, you, you. You, you can achieve some of the things that you want, but it's like you have to envision it in a, in a way that's more realistic like Capricorn. The fact that they have Pluto and Scorpio pretty much the same degree, again, give or take, there's a lot of conflict in this relationship. You know, besides the fact they share a child and the back and forth um, and all of that, there's a lot of conflict. I feel when they fight, it gets bad. And I feel like she, they both say things to hurt each other but I think she does things like she I feel like she could be really like kind of more you know I don't want to say destructive but she might do more things whereas I feel like with him it's like what he says um and with her I feel like she gets more mad in the moment but he does more things over time that really might bother Cardi according to this but also um here's the thing I also want to say with all this mutable energy he has in his chart and then I'm about to close out all this energy he has in his chart Mutable. Mutable isn't bad, but the problem is everything it has to have context. So if you have a man or a woman, um, but even especially with like the hip hop industry or, or any type of music industry where 
you know, um, sometimes, you know, there's the whole, you know, groupie type of thing. That's not the only um, genre. We know back in the, you know, with, during the, uh, you know, the heavy rock days, there are so many documentaries on those, uh, on those bands that had like a lot of groupies. So it's not just hip hop, but when you have that many options and other women possibly around um, in that type of entertainment industry, you know, models or, or things like that and clubs and whatever they're doing, mutable energy isn't grounded. So if you're a mutable sign, you have a lot of mutable energy and that energy is not directed and, and you can get easily distracted. Whereas I feel like all of her cardinal energy, regardless of what we think about Cardi, there's more of a, a understanding of where her direction is. Whether you like how she says it or not, there's more of an understanding there. Um, you know, and I think, you know, I think that I'm not going to get into their North nodes right now as much um, as say, um, because of his Capricorn North node, I think over time, um, Offset's eventually going to want to, um, make money outside of, uh, outside of rap. He's going to make money. He's going to want to do things outside of that because Capricorn needs something that's long standing. When your North node is in Capricorn, you're here to learn how to achieve things, but you have to work for it. And, and, and Capricorn likes to not, it's not about hoarding anything. It's about success, but it's about durability. And Capricorn energy likes to say, like, I've built up this success. So I think over time, he's probably going to make sure that he makes money outside of hip hop. Um, as far as his Juno sign, the marriage or significant partner, his is an Aquarius. Now, she doesn't have a lot of Aquarius in her chart. Now, Juno doesn't mean you have to date that sign, but it, it means the energy should be within that person. So Juno and Aquarius... You know, he might need a partner who is more open to different types of relationships. I don't know if he needs an open relationship or whatever the situation may be. But Juno and Aquarius would, you know, not that they would all be into that, but Juno and Aquarius is is less restrictive. I mean, it's less cardinal, I would say, right? It's a fixed sign, but Juno and Aquarius is more like, um, it's a partner that's going to have more of an understanding of the freedoms that are needed in a relationship. And even though we can say, well, she's a Libra, Libra is kind of like their freedom too, but she's a Libra with a lot of heavy energy, Mars and cancer. I, I'm going to act out if I don't get the love that I receive. I'm going to act out if I don't get what I receive back. But I think Mars and cancer, what you also see with her is there are, there is a part of Cardi that has been very, um, you know, again, she, 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 she has her opposite signs, her sun and her moon, so she flip-flops. But not not in a, in a, in a, in, I, I don't mean she, I think she flip-flops more emotional. Like you see Cardi saying something really positive and then you'll see Cardi saying something negative to somebody and it's, you know, it's like that type of energy. But her Juno being in cancer, I think she needs a very protective partner. I think she needs a partner who's at home more. Even though she's an entertainer, I feel like her, she might need someone who shows her stability. Someone who shows her emotional stability. Someone who shows her that it is possible to have a relationship and feel that you are emotionally secure. I think he can provide financially. She provides for herself financially. They have money. Again, there could be a money thing. Um, perhaps, I, I mean, I think that, you know, there might be a slight negotiation in their divorce. I don't think it's going to be perfectly smooth. I think there are going to be things, I want this, you want this. I don't think it's going to be 100% smooth. Um, I don't know if it's going to get really nasty or not. Again, they also could, re you know, this is Mar Mars and retrograde. So we don't, they could get back together. Like, let's be honest here. Um, they have before, but again, that's, that's up to them. Um, don't worry about this ascendant part here because again, this is not their actual charts. I mean, this is their, this is their, <laughs> their placements, but this is not. Um, I just did a, a sunrise um, thing when I put this together. So don't worry about the Ascendant because we would need their birth time for that. But yeah, I think their Junos are very drastically different. And so that doesn't mean a relationship can't work, but it does mean that they have to compromise way more. She needs way more emotional security from a partner. Even though she she kind of can, you know, people see her as, oh, she's confident or she's always saying something, she's always speaking her mind. She needs more someone to kind of cultivate her. Like, not mold her, not tame her, because I think that's kind of sexist, but she just needs to feel safe. And I think you would see a softer side of Cardi if she felt more safe emotionally within the relationship. And with him, I think the Juno and Aquarius is he needs more freedom from a, a partner and he might feel like there's a lot of limitations within the marriage, within a marriage description that he may or may not really 100% be into.